G'day, Ben Futrell here from on3legs.com, and I'm really excited today to bring you a brand new video series. You see, I've been running my blog at on3legs.com for a long time, uh, several years now, and there's about 500 blog posts there. I get a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of great interaction there. And if you go to that site, you will see uh, lots of tips, tricks, and hints, a lot of my photos, and uh, you know, a few discussions there on how to take better photos. Um, the other thing that I find happens a lot though is I get a lot of questions asked to me across all different platforms. So whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, through my blog, private messaging, email, I get asked all sorts of questions and it would be uh, rare for me not to get at least, you know, two, three questions every single week. And I know these questions, although it's you just asking me that question, there's probably a bunch of people that want to know the answer to the same question. So I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this show called Ask Ben. And I'm going to attempt to ask to answer any of your questions. So no matter what question you've got, feel free to ask me. Now, how can you ask a question if you want to get your question onto the show? Well, you can get me a Twitter. I'm at on three legs and uh, just hashtag Ask Ben, or you can jump onto my Facebook page, shoot me a message there, uh, jump onto my blog on threelegs.com, ask me a question there, uh, whether it's through uh, private messaging or you publicly do it, I don't mind either way. And if I think your question is something that a lot of people are looking for the answer for, then I'll whack it into a video and it'll become part of the show. Now today's question comes from a fellow called Chris Williams. And Chris asked me a question that's a very common question that I get. And Chris asked this question. When using Topaz Labs, what is the best way to edit only parts of the pictures? Sometimes I don't want to apply the effect to the entire shot. Thanks for your question, Chris, and it's a great question. And it's a question that I do get an awful lot. The good news is it's actually quite simple to do. And I'm going to show you today, uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this, but I'm going to show you my preferred method. I'm going to assume that if you've got Topaz Labs, that you've got Photoshop, because it is a Photoshop plugin. Now, if you don't have Topaz Labs and you want to get yourself either the entire bundle or just Topaz Adjust, which we're going to have a look at today, uh, then maybe what you want to do is jump onto my website on threelegs.com. On the right-hand side, there's a little picture there that gives you, you click on that and there's a coupon code there. It'll give you 15% off uh, whatever you buy in the Topaz Lab store. I know it's not much, but it's better than a poke in the eye with a tripod leg. All right, let's, uh, let's jump onto the computer and I'm going to show you how to use Topaz Labs uh, and only adjust a part of the image. Okay, so I've got the image now opened up in Photoshop. And it's a picture that I took from my balcony at the Bahamas where I was a couple of weeks ago. I took this with the Fuji X-T1, if you're wondering what camera I used. Uh, and you can see it's a, you know, it's a nice image, looks okay, but we can enhance this using uh, Topaz. And Topaz have some great filters. Um, for those of you that haven't heard of Topaz Labs, I suggest you jump on their site, topazlabs.com, and go and check out all the different plugins they have. I have all their plugins and I love them. I think they're you know, great in any photographer's toolkit, especially for post-processing. So what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, is you'll see that this image is opened up as a background in Photoshop. I'm just going to drag that little padlock down into the bin and create this, turn this into a layer. I'm then going to press Command-J. You can press Control-J if you've got a PC rather than a Mac. And I'm actually going to do that again. I'm going to make three copies. And now I'm going to rename each layer. I'm going to call this one Backup. Okay, this is the one that we're not going to touch no matter what. Uh, that gives us a backup image. I'm going to call this one Topaz. I'm going to adjust that layer in Topaz, and I'm going to call this one my final image. And that'll all make sense as we go on, but you can see now I've got three layers. The third layer is not important, it's just a backup. We're really only working with two layers. The next thing I do is I'm going to highlight the Topaz layer, and I'll turn off the top layer. I'm going to highlight the Topaz layer, and I'm going to go into Filter, Topaz Labs, and I'm going to select Topaz Adjust 5. And we're going to go into Topaz now, and we're going to make some adjustments. Now, um, Chris, there's a couple of ways you can make these local adjustments. You can do it inside of Topaz. You'll see them on the right-hand side here. There actually is a local adjustment section where you can make local adjustments. Um, I prefer to use global adjustments, make global adjustments, and then from there, uh, I bring it back into Photoshop, and I use Photoshop to make the local adjustments. And that's my preferred method, and, and I'll show you how I do it that way. You can, however, make local adjustments inside of Topaz if you want. Okay, so this image here, I'm going to jump into my global adjustments, and I'm just gonna go a bit crazy. I know it's not gonna look nice, uh, because I just want to uh, really show you uh, what you can do. And you can see I'm going a bit crazy on the, on the detail. It looks very ugly, uh, almost, you know, something you wouldn't want to use, which is okay, and I'll show you why very shortly. I'm gonna bring that sharpness down a bit. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna say okay. Now when I say okay, 
Topaz Labs is, or Topaz Adjust is going to process that image and it's going to put me back into Photoshop. So now what you're seeing is you're seeing that image inside of Photoshop and if I click on the top layer, you can see the difference between the Topaz layer and the original photo and you can see it's quite a big difference. You probably think, well, Ben, that is horrible and I agree, it's horrible. I wouldn't leave it like that. The key now is we're going to create a layer mask. So I'm clicking onto the one that's called Final. Down the bottom here, uh, there's a thing with a like a white rectangle with a circle in the middle. That's a layer mask. And if I just hover my mouse over there, it's not going to do it. It should tell me that that's a layer mask, but it is. There we go, layer mask thumbnail. So you'll see that uh, that's my layer mask. Now the way a mask works, and I will show you, select a brush, and you'll see that I've got this circle. So that's a brush. And I can adjust the size of the brush with my right or left square bracket. I can also adjust the flow and the opacity. So let's just go to 100 on both of those for a second. Got to make sure that black is selected over on the left hand side. And uh, black reveals white conceals. This is what you've got to remember. Black reveals white conceals. So if I want to just quickly go back and show you the topaz layer, just say I like the water and I want to bring through some of that water with all that detail from the topaz. If I get my black uh, brush and I brush over the water, like so, I can bring through just that part. Now I'm going to just hit my backslash so you can see uh, the red is the area that I've just used black on. That's what's called a mask. And it means that I'm bringing through aspects of the photo behind it. So I'll do the same thing to the, the hotel. Okay, you'll see that's really made the hotel stand out. Now it's rare that I would use 100%. I'm going to just undo those two changes. I would typically go up here, I would make my flow let's call it 50%, and my opacity, I would probably do maybe 40%. And because I like the way the water stands out in the topaz one, I can just do that. Same with the building, I can make it sort of stand out that little bit more. Uh, maybe these clouds here, you know, you can make them stand out more. Now, if you do something and you don't like it, just press the X key, it flicks across to the white, and white then, remember, white conceals, black reveals. So. If I don't like it, I go to white, and that will then conceal it. Just brush over it in white. Um, if I ever want to see what I've done, just hit the backslash, and it'll show you the red areas. And the you know the darker the red means the more solid you've uh, you've gone through the mask. Um, I'll just go back to black, and we'll just do a little bit on the trees down here because I like the way it brighten them up. And that's too much, so I can bring my opacity down. And it's just about making these adjustments just gradually. Bring that up just a little bit. Okay, and I might, I might go, you know what, that's it. Now what I do, once I've got my final one, I just press Command or Control E, and it creates my final image. Um, now you see, that was the image we started with, and that was after a little bit of topaz. Um, and it's probably a little overdone, but just for the example, it shows you uh, how simple it is to use it. So Chris, hopefully that answered your question on how to use only a part of your image if you're using Topaz Labs, or and in this example, use Topaz Adjust. Uh, remember, uh, hit the subscribe button. I think it's up here somewhere. Uh, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Um, I've got a question for you uh, before we finish up. Actually, before I do that, before I give you the question, um, just a reminder, uh, on3legs.com, go to my website, hit me up at, uh, at on3legs, hashtag AskBen on Twitter. Uh, Facebook slash on three legs. Ask me any question you want and I will uh, do my best to try and answer it. Um, and, and now before I go, here's a quick question for you. I want to know, and put it in the comments down below, what's your favourite lens that you use and why? Let's put that down there. What's your favourite lens and your why? You keep asking questions, I'll do my absolute best to try and answer them.